Hello, all you wonderful fools. It's time for the Mr. T Show. Here we go, let's start the show. No stick by Mr. T. Nintendo video games, all the favorite ones for me. Music review, some gameplay too. Battle and drones is what I do. Is it? Is it I am just the show by Mr. T. It's the show by Mr. T. Hey there, fools. Big T here, and I'm back after a mini vacation of sorts. I was in South Florida visiting family, and I also got to see the legendary uh, MC Nas, my favorite rapper. To me, the, the greatest MC of all time, certainly living MC of all time. And uh, it was an amazing show. I think it was Janice Live Club. It was very humid <laughs> once he came out i got in the zone and started remembering all the awesome songs so it was cool uh but anyway uh i'm back and now let's get into uh some nintendo hate contortionism <laughs> if that's a word let's do it well hello everyone i'm barry the nintendo hate contortionist Man, that Nintendo Switch January event was trash. <laughs> the Nintendo Switch is dead in the water. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> after the Nintendo Switch was revealed, folks, uh, there was a lot of haters saying that it was, you know, trash. Uh, the system was too weak, it was dead in the water and all this good stuff. And um, none of that seemed to matter to uh, uh, even-minded gamers uh, who saw, you know, the cool things about the Switch. And um, there's, for whatever reasons, there's a contingency of n people, not just Nintendo fans, but who just don't understand how Nintendo operates today. And uh, they're not interested in being uh, in a drag-out fight with Sony and Microsoft. They understand that they compete with them because they all make video games. But Nintendo was always going to offer a unique way of gaming uh, to differentiate themselves. And uh, obviously their games do that. But they also feel like they can push gaming to uh, different levels of fun and uh, excitement. And I'm happy that they do that. Um, they offer something different every time. And uh, they've done that from the beginning. And... Uh, from what I see, and I'm sure what everybody else sees, uh, which is, you know, facts, is that the Switch, uh, it's not dead in the water, uh, never was going to be, because it was such a unique device. Obviously, this is a hybrid system, um, but it is a handheld on one point, and it is a home console on another, and even if people didn't go along with the uh, the home console nature of the Switch, Nintendo handhelds always do well, even when they don't. <laughs> uh, the 3DS started off slow, but you know, obviously it eventually picked up. It's over 70 million sold right now. The 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 games themselves also sell well. Uh, people talk about the PSP and how well it sold. It sold 80 million, but the problem is the games didn't sell that well. I would. You know, I'm, I'm guessing, and uh, if I'll put up a graphic if I'm wrong, but I think the peak selling uh, PSP title was around three or four million, and that's pretty terrible for an install base that high. And uh, I believe the peak selling software on the uh, 3DS is well above that. I think it's in the mid to late teen millions. Uh, so again, I'll put up a graphic. Um, when I go check that out but uh so even if you were skeptical about the console hybrid nature of it the handheld portion of the switch was always going to do well um because as a handheld it's super powerful and you're getting console games and you know it was only fifty dollars more than the 3ds launched at and it was the same price as the vita launched at I guess we can move into the next section because that kind of leads into from what I was just saying. Oh my god, what a piece of trash! The Nintendo Switch is just entirely, entirely too expensive for what it is! The Nintendo Switch is too expensive. Remember once the price was revealed at the uh, January event, people were talking about how expensive it was. It was 
they were talking about the controller, how it was too expensive, even though it was only five bucks, I believe five bucks more than a PS4 controller or an Xbox. Can we, should we even mention the Xbox One controller? Because it doesn't come with rechargeable battery. Um, while the, the, the uh, PS4 came with a rechargeable battery, the battery life is four hours tops. Um, I have one. And uh, the Pro Controller's battery life is 20 hours, uh, or is it 40 hours? And the 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 uh, Joy Cons uh, is 20 hours. So you know, obviously, still better, better tech. It also has uh, a Rumble a HD Rumble, and it also has the NFC feature, um, and uh, obviously gyro controls. So five dollars more, even ten dollars more, is not that big of a deal when you look at all the features. Um, you know, some will say, well, I don't want to have to pay for that. Well, there's stuff in PS4 controller and the Xbox One controller I don't care to pay for. Uh, rumble triggers. It's an, it's a neat little thing, but it's not. If I had the choice, I wouldn't pay for it. Um, same goes for the touchpad on the PS4 controller. If I had the choice, I wouldn't pay for it. I mean, you are paying for these things and I've never even used it. So, you know, there's nuance and everything. People will only cover one part when they want to win an argument though so that's always the case but it's not too expensive um honestly i think i was surprised how cheap it was because you're getting a console uh you know with the dock and all that and basically two controllers obviously not uh the most ideal two controllers but it still gives you that option you know to play two controls and i've done it and it works really well um but you still get that option so you get that and then you have you know, a console with a screen on it that you can take with you, you know, and that is awesome. Uh, you get three to five hours of battery life out of it, depending on the game you're using and what um, what your uh, brightness settings are. And that's phenomenal for three. I'm really surprised that they were able to get this thing at three hundred dollars um, when the game pad itself was what, a hundred dollars costing the the Wii U basically a hundred dollars for manufacturing costs. So, to me, to me, that's uh, pretty pretty amazing. Um, and I'm not the only one saying that. As a Nintendo fan, uh, there were some developers that came out and said that they were surprised that Nintendo was able to offer this thing at that price. And again, look at the sales. The price appears to be right. So, um, not too expensive. Oh boy. <laughs> this is uh, not a home console. It's just too weak. The specs, it's just trash. <laughs> and then the argument is too weak. And these guys move from argument to argument um, when they try to downplay what the Switch is. They move from argument to argument. They move the goalposts, um, as has been said famously in this community. Um, so they, you know, once you combat them on dead in the water, uh, too expensive they move on to something else it's too weak it's just too weak because they seem to think for whatever reasons that uh most consumers most gamers are obsessed with the cutting edgiest of the edgiest of edges of graphics and that's just not the case that is a core gamer thing that is a niche uh, uh, part of the community that cares about that people want good looking games and they want console looking games uh, the average gamer the casual gamer the they just want something that looks good plays good and it's convenient and nintendo switch checks all those boxes uh, the games run well they look great they may not look uh, the most cutting is edgiest, like I said. Uh, maybe the textures are a little bit blurrier or the frame rate isn't quite as high, but it's steady. And um, people will uh, make those concessions. They'll take those concessions for the convenience of the Switch. People just want things to be convenient. Uh, people have paid for convenience um, in every uh, industry. They paid a little bit more for that. Um, and it's no different in video games. The two week argument only holds water when you're you're fanboying and you're like, well, my console is more powerful than yours. Okay, great, but your console is stuck to that TV <laughs> in your in your room or your living room, whatever. I can take my console on the go. I uh, famously did that during my 
trip to South Florida to see Nas in concert. I put up uh, uh, some photos of me on the plane playing it, and uh, it was uh, pretty popular. A lot of people seemed to like it. They reshared it. Two week only matters to, uh, I don't know, graphics whores who want a talking point. Um, it doesn't matter to the average gamer, the average consumer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Sorry. It's not, again, it's not hurting the Switch's sales or any of that stuff, so. Well, yeah, well, uh, the, the Switch, uh, because of all those other things I said, will not get third party. <laughs> I've always said before, uh, the Wii had all these hindrances. The online wasn't there. The, the graphical power wasn't there. But at the end of the day, companies want to make money. None of that will matter. Will matter as long as they have an audience to sell their games to. And the Wii's audience was hard to ignore. So many of the major third parties ported games. They downscaled them or whatever to play on um, to play on the Wii. Uh, EA did that. Activision did that, obviously, with Call of Duties and Maddens. Um, so you still got some multi-plats. Uh, but the difference is, as I pointed out in the video about the Switch's power, the Wii to 360 PS3 is a way huger gap in graphics than the Switch is to Xbox One and PS4. It is much closer. So me looking at that and being a logical person, I just said, well, hey, the Wii got multi-plats, you know, ported. The Switch will easily get that as long as it sells. And obviously it's selling and it's going to get, and it is getting multi-plats. Uh, we see the 2Ks, we see uh, Doom, obviously, Wolfenstein, Skyrim. Um, other games have been mentioned, you know, uh, L.A. Noir. Uh, that is only going to continue as long as the Switch is continuing to sell. It's already a success as far as I'm concerned. It's going to continue to sell throughout its life as long as it keeps getting stellar games. And Nintendo's serving it up with some great games. I'm sure 2018 will be even more uh, amazing so i'm just being a logical person saying well if the wii could get multi-plats the switch will end up getting much more multi-plats because it's not as weak compared to its you know compared to its counterparts and uh it's it's just a logical <laughs> step so yeah getting third party has third party we'll continue to get it Sorry. Well, yeah, well, forget all that. The the Nintendo Switch cannot, and I repeat, cannot run current-gen games. <laughs> Obviously, with Doom, Wolfenstein being announced. Uh, and these are top tier. These are some of the most taxing games on current-gen. And you're getting uh, versions for the Switch. And they look pretty close. Obviously, there's a frame rate difference and a... Um, a, a pixel, you know, difference as far as 720p versus 1080 um, or 900p, um, which is, I believe, the Xbox One version is 900p. Um, so you're getting a drop there, but again, you're, you're, what you're getting on the other side is the ability to play it everywhere. And maybe you don't want to play outside your house, you know, maybe you're not an on-the-go gamer, um, but maybe you are, or maybe you just like me, where you like to plop down anywhere in your house and play it and not be tethered to a TV. You want to go hang out in the living room and watch a game or something. And you can watch a game and play one at the same time. I mean, unlike where the Wii U, you had this range issue. You don't have the range issue when it comes to the Switch because the console is in your hands uh, with a screen on it. So um, I made a video right before the Switch, the Doom and Wolfenstein uh, announcement were were made. I made a video saying I believed, well, actually, let me just play the portion of the video I, I made uh, about a week before the, uh, the reveal of Doom and Wolfenstein 2. People that are also afraid that the Switch isn't going to get games just because it's less powerful. Again, first of all, it's not the difference of Wii to 360 or Wii to PS3. Uh, the Switch isn't that big of a difference. And even the Wii got multiplex major uh quote unquote triple a third party multiplex there's there isn't a game out today that i think um couldn't be on the switch um i'm sure there are going to be some games in the future 
at some point, maybe. So there you have it. I mean, I was confident. I just I was just looking at the tech in the Switch and saying it's modern tech. It should be able to run these modern games. It has all the engine support that it needs. And why would it why would it go out on a limb and, and put all these the support for these engines like Unreal Engine 4 and Vulcan and all that? Why would it do that if it wasn't going to have games that utilize that stuff? So never made sense to me. And that's why I said confidently and I was right that it can run current gen games. Now, will there be games coming up that it won't be able to run? Sure. At some point, maybe two, three years down the line. But you know even those maybe they can find a way to scale them down because the switch is scalable so again it's just the average gamer doesn't care about having the edges 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 of everything they just want to be able to play that console game anywhere anytime they want and have that freedom it's the it's a it's the freedom factor man and it's big uh, well, uh, uh, screw all those arguments. This goalpost is getting heavy, man, but I'm going to move it one more time. Screw all those arguments. You guys should be thanking me for hating on the Wii U and Nintendo for so long. Thank me for what you got now. <laughs> Maybe you'd have an argument there. <laughs> if um, when the Switch was revealed, you were confident, you were happy as I see this is what... I want it. This is what Nintendo's given us because of my uh, dissent. But you didn't do that. You, most of you, if not all of you guys, once the Switch was revealed, said all these other things. Uh, I can't do this. I just, I just ran down the gamut of what you said after the Any Switch was time. revealed. And it still uh, gotcha. defied all that crap and still is popular and doing well. So how can you take credit for something once you saw revealed you continue to hate. <laughs> um, and nothing has changed based on your Switch hate. Uh, it still has the issues that it has, and it's still selling well. How, how have you done anything? I mean, that that is just a pathetic attempt. A pathetic attempt to uh, preemptively strike <laughs> the fact that you're going to have to bend the knee to the Switch. Because... A lot of times, at the end of the day, a lot of these guys are popularity whores. And if something is popular, they will eventually bend the knee and join the popularity train because they can't think for themselves. They can't, they don't have a principal stance about anything. This was never a principal stance about Nintendo or their policies or any of that stuff. It's just unmitigated hate. Uh, for the fact that Nintendo doesn't do anything they want, doesn't provide gaming the way they want it, and it's it's a still successful company, and they hate that, and they hate the fact that Nintendo games score high, and there's all this, uh, you know, admiration for Nintendo. Meanwhile, they they see that the company, their favorite company, doesn't get that stuff. And they they they're upset about that. So they hated on Nintendo for uh, you know you know forever, and um, the people that have supported them are starting to turn. <laughs> they're uh, they're getting switches, and you know some of them still hate as they have it, but they know the narrative has changed, and they can't combat the narrative. So now it's I'm gonna take credit for what the switch is, even though I've hated. Nintendo for all this time and I even hated the Switch reveal for what it was. So it is pretty pathetic watching these uh, gymnasts, <laughs> these contortionists, boo bears uh, try to take credit and try to act like they didn't say and do what they said. You just be quiet now, little bear. Be quiet and bend the knee to Nintendo. <laughs> And Nintendo fans, enjoy it, you know. You deserve uh, to st throw this stuff back in their face. Don't get too crazy about it, but you deserve to uh, to celebrate a little bit after, uh, what, a decade of just nonsense from these guys. So, anyway, that's it for my video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, step over the Boo Bears and enjoy your Switch. <laughs> Thanks for watching and listening, as always, and I'll see you fools next time. Peace out. Oh yeah, one more thing. Play Nintendo, fools. Dude.